Hi, this is Jason Lindenberg from Trek Bicycle, uh, here with Mountain Bike Action, here to talk to you today about SAG. All right, so first of all, what is SAG? SAG is the suspension compression just due to the weight of the bike, rider, and gear. And why is it important? Well, just as there are bumps on the trail, there's also holes. So suspension needs not only to soak up the bumps, but more importantly, it also needs to maintain traction. So when the wheel does move through those holes, it needs to be able to extend and keep the tire on the ground. So the two common problems you run into are having too much sag, uh, which means that there's too low of a spring rate. Basically it results in frequent bottom outs, so it feels harsh and it's an inefficient uh, use of the travel. So the bike feels kind of mushy. Overall, it, it compromises the geometry of the bike. The other issue you run into is having too little sag, which means that the spring rate is too high. This results in the rider not utilizing full travel. The bike's unable to respond to a lot of the hits because it's, it once again ends up being harsh. Um, and there's also a loss of precision where the bike is skipping over objects on the trail. So now we're gonna talk about the kind of difference in setup between cross country, all mountain, and downhill applications. So in general, you're usually running about 20 to 30% sag overall. Um, however, in a cross country setting, they tend to go with a little less sag, closer to that 20% range. Um, which focuses more on efficiency and maintaining that higher and steeper geometry. Um, in the all-mountain category, uh, we kind of end up in the middle, about a 25% sag seems to be a, a good benchmark. This allows a balance of capability as far as bump response, as well as maintaining some of that efficiency. And then in the downhill category, we push closer to the 30% sag, um, just for maintaining optimum traction and control at all times. It also slackens and lowers the geometry for a more stable, better cornering bike. So now the process to, to set up sag. Basically, whenever you're starting to set up uh, spring rate, you wanna start with your dampers completely open, both the rebound and compression. The next step, you can usually check for a recommended spring rate, whether it's a coil or air shock setting. Um, shock settings are typically listed by the manufacturer, and fork settings would be typically shown on the fork or through the fork manufacturer's site. Next step is to fill shock and fork um, to the recommended pressures and then cycle, um, making sure to, to go through travel to reset any negative spring volumes, uh, especially with the new shocks with larger negative spring volumes. It, takes more of this process to get the canister balanced. Next step, to mount the bike and basically bounce and then settle um, at your in your riding position. And then at that point, you would push the O-ring up to the seal. Next, you would dismount and without compressing the suspension. Helps to have somebody um, lift up on the bike if you have a friend that can help you out just to avoid compressing the shock and fork further. At this point, you can then measure the sag by measuring from the wiper to the O-ring, uh, whatever that distance is, divided by the total stroke length will give you your percentage of sag. Um, from there, you can adjust spring pressure to get your sag to the optimum point, either adding pressure to reduce sag or reducing pressure to increase sag.